morning and welcome. Happy Friday, everyone. The day before May the 4th be with you. So for any Star Wars fans out there, uh, tomorrow's a big day for y'all. Uh, but today we have something even more important and we're going to hear from Dr. Karina Garza about pharmacy. And so we're so excited to have her uh, join us and kind of tell us more about the profession and we'll kind of do her introduction as far as uh, her position and, and the partnerships with DHR. And uh, I will turn it over to you, Dr. Garza. Or Dr. Sounds Pablo, good. If you want to do an introduction as well. <laughs> no, no worries. Yes. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Karina Garza. Um, I am a clinical pharmacist here at DHR Health, as well as a clinical assistant professor with the University of Houston College of Pharmacy. Um, I am a graduate of uh, Mission High School uh, here in the Valley, and I am also a uh, have my doctorate of pharmacy degree for the University of Texas at Austin. Hook 'em horns. I like the shirt. And yeah, I actually graduated in 2010. So believe it or not, I have been a pharmacist. I can't even believe it myself. Actually, this month, it'll be uh, 14 years that I graduated uh, from UT Pharmacy School. So uh, definitely very blessed. Um, you know, I've had a lot of different, uh, not a lot of different jobs, but a couple of uh, about three of them. This is my third place, all been in hospital. Uh, and now with my role being a little bit in the academic setting with the University of Houston, but I still get to to do my part here at DHR Health. Uh, really such a blessing. I, I love doing all this. I love giving talks like this and mentoring students. And we also do of what we call precepting, uh, which is essentially, you know, uh, precepting some of our pharmacy students as they go through school. Awesome. Thank you. Again, we have a new, it looks like La Jolla has joined us, and I went ahead and put a chat, so something I can reference um, in case they missed your name and, and credentials. Um, that's something that will, will kind of help guide them uh, for the rest of the session. Sounds good. So in case you're wondering why I'm wearing this shirt, it is college day. Uh, uh, many oh. students are doing decision day across the state of Texas. And so we are supporting uh, colleges and the students and the choices they're making for the seniors that are you know, making that, that foray into their, their future. And so that's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that we got a fellow Longhorn in the house. That's a couple of <laughs> times know. that I've actually hosted this and it's had a Longhorn influence. So uh, I am <laughs> a lot of great colleges out there. It just happens to be the ones that we attended. And so we're supporting it. 100%. 100%. Awesome. Speaking of college, you want to kind of talk a little bit about that and, and how um, you took, made the choice, the decision? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad you pointed out. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, great colleges in our state all across the nation. I think we're very, very fortunate. Uh, believe it or not, the way I that or the reason why I went to the University of Texas at Austin is because when I was in high school, we had something called uh, or there was something available called the Cooperative Pharmacy Program. So it's basically kind of a, like an accelerated program. So for some of y'all that that may not know, uh, pharmacy changed in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s to becoming a doctoral program. So it used to be that all you needed was a bachelor's. Now you have to have a doctorate degree, which means you have to go uh, four years of graduate school or, or pharmacy school. So um, a lot of people, the traditional route would be, you know, three or four years of, of undergrad, and then you would move into your graduate program. So the cooperative program that I was a part of, which was with uh, UTPA back then, now UTRGV, um, and the University of Texas at Austin, it was basically a 2 2 2 so I would do uh, two years at UTPA. I would get into, or I was already admitted into pharmacy school, believe it or not, I would do two years in Austin. And then I was able to come back home and do my last two years here, which was one year of school schooling, one year of rotations. Um, so able to be back home, save some money, things of that nature. So that's actually how or why I went to the University of Texas, because I had this program available to me. Uh, it was really great. A lot of us, uh, you know, there was a cohort of about, uh, I think there was 12 in my class. This went on for, I don't even have the exact number of years, but I, I believe it was at least 10, if not more, uh, that um, they, they brought this cooperative pharmacy program to the Valley, basically to help with the dire need of pharmacists that we needed back in the day. 
uh, you know, in about the mid 2000s, we were in a very, in a very dire shortage. We actually had a pharmacist coming from Houston, San Antonio, anywhere North Texas to work down here because we didn't have enough. So that's why they created the, the co-op program, which is what I'm a part of. And now a lot of my friends here, I think we've got one, two, three, four, uh, yeah, about, there's at least four or five of us here just from the co-op program within about three years of when I graduated. And so that's not even counting our pharmacists downstairs. That's about, a you know, it's probably about a third of the 15 clinical pharmacists I can think of off the top of my head. So that program did exactly what it needed to do. A lot of us are working here in the Valley now, whether it's in hospital or retail and things of that nature. So that's kind of how and why I went to the University of Texas at Austin. I think, you know, in, in my personal opinion, I think it was really great for me, especially being here from the Valley and our culture. You know, we're, we're a lot of homebodies. We, we like home. Uh, it's hard for us to leave sometimes. So I think it was really neat that I was able to grow for two years and then able to explore for two years out, away from home, gain knowledge, gain experience, all of that great things, and then able to come back and contribute uh, to my city and, and where I where I live and where, where I came from. Uh, that's always been my goal. So I always try to, you know, um, uh, you know, let people know it's okay to go to school here. There's nothing wrong with that. You might even have an opportunity to go somewhere for a little while, you know, after that, your, your third or your fourth year, uh, take advantage of those opportunities. If you can, it is great to go out and explore and learn and bring back uh, if you can. But if not, we have perfectly great schools. I mean, UTPA, now UTRGV has grown exponentially uh, it's really neat. Take advantage of programs like I did, uh, you know, the cooperative pharmacy programs that have, there's so many different ones out there. So many college courses, credits you can get in high school now. Uh, but just be sure that you're ready, um, <laughs> to leave. It's not the easiest thing to leave home. Uh, but I did learn a lot. I grew a lot and, uh, I definitely think it's ex experience everybody should have. So. Excellent. Continue with that. How did you find out about it? And is it still? Uh, yeah. So, um, well, I guess I'm kind of fortunate. I have a, my father's a pharmacist also, but I actually don't even think I heard it from him. Um, it actually came about from the counselors uh, that I knew at school. You know, there was a lot of uh, information out there about different programs, different scholarships, uh, things of that nature. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of, I just remember a lot of flyers being posted and things of that nature. And I think I saw, I think I saw one. And then because of, uh, you know, my dad being a pharmacist, I knew people I could ask about the program and things of that nature. And when I did that, uh, that's when I found out, wow, I think this is what I really want to do. So. Awesome. So is it still taking place today? Did have they continued or you said it <laughs> no, I, need, so. yeah. So now we've, we, it's, it's a full cycle because we actually went to where we were kind of uh, very saturated. And what I mean by that is there wasn't too many jobs, probably uh, the past couple of years. However, I'll tell you, you know, uh, here at DHR Health, we have what's called a, a pharmacy residency program. And the pharmacy residency program is after your four years of pharmacy school, you get you can choose to do an additional year um, of training as a pharmacy resident. So you essentially won't necessarily, uh, you still become a licensed pharmacist. You have to become a licensed pharmacist. Uh, however, you're doing like a year of training. So the pay is maybe about, you know, 70% or so. Uh, but it's it's all training. The goal is to get three years of experience in one. And um, so when when the residents, uh, they're getting ready to finish up, they finish up in June, believe it or not, all we have three of them right now, all three of them had more than one job offer. So it, it it's like a cycle, you know what I mean? So we're kind of seeing it again, where we're needing pharmacists. And what we, what we kind of think is happening is that generational gap. So we have all those people that, uh, you know, the, the older generation that is now getting ready to retire, you've seen them retire, and now those spots are opening again. And so, you know, it, it's kind of coming back. And uh, yeah, the, the co-op was with, with, um, with UT, right? So now that UT RGV is where it is, I think there was talk for a little bit of a pharmacy school, as well as one being um, not too far in Kingsville. So they kind of felt like, you know, it's already uh, the need is kind of taken care of for now. But I will tell you, they're trying to ensure that they send students back. We're getting a, a cohort of about uh, three to five, you know, just this, this coming month or this in May. 
So where we're trying to, you know, bring them all. So we get students uh, from everywhere. Uh, pharmacy students here at DHR Health, we get U of H, Texas A&M, Kingsville, Texas A&M, um, uh, up there. Uh, what else we got? I said UT. We've seen uh, North Texas, Incarnate Word. We, I don't know if we've had a Texas Tech student, but there's a Texas Tech pharmacy student. We've even have students from outside of Texas that go to other uh, universities in the United States that are from here that choose, want to do a rotation. And so uh, DHR is really great with, you know, collaborating with those schools to ensure they can come here. Excellent. So tell us, you're a clinical assistant professor. So, and it's through University of Houston. Are you down here? Are you there? Is it virtual? Tell us. Yeah, uh, great, great question. So this was a new role for me. Uh, I, you know, my, my past experience, I came into this role um, in February of 2020, literally right before the pandemic. So I didn't re get to really, um, I guess that role, it took a little while before it really started because of the pandemic and things of that nature. Uh, but really what an, a clinical assistant professor does is we do, we are, we are uh, remote. So I am here in at DHR in Edinburgh, Texas. Uh, what we do is we can possibly, we can have the opportunity to teach a class, maybe an elective or, you know, be a lecturer in, in one of the courses. But uh, the bigger or the larger role we play is in research, um, in precepting students, and basically doing like what I'm doing right now, mentoring out, uh, you know, to our students here in, in the Valley, uh, letting them know about the University of Houston College of Pharmacy, but, you know, all of healthcare in general. Awesome. I love that you're mentoring. Can you share about mentoring? What opportunities might exist for some of the students tuning in today? Uh, yeah, well, we work, you know, we work well with, with region one, with paths, with a lot of different high schools here. I, uh, you know, I, our, our wonderful, uh, project manager, I like to call her, Se uh, Selena helps us out to ensure that we are, you know, all over the Valley as much as we can be. If anybody has a career affair or, you know, something similar to that, we try to be out there and ensure that we're communicating to them that we're here. Uh, the other thing is anytime I get into contact with somebody who may be interested in pharmacy, you know, I let them know, hey, you know, now after COVID for a little while there, we we couldn't really bring anybody in. But now it's, you know, uh, it's, it's pretty open or available as long as you you follow, you know, the things that are needed to be here. Uh, you can come shadow. You can come see what we can do. You can, uh, you know, any questions you might have that we can answer. I also like to tell people we're here to further mentor you and help you, you know, prepare for an interview uh, review your CV or, or your resume, uh, things of that nature. That's really uh, near and dear to my heart because I think that there's a lot of students here in the Valley. I think exactly what we're doing is great. And this is what more students need to hear uh, that you can go out there and be prepared for these, you know, these interviews that might be a little daunting if you've never done them before. Uh, you know, nowadays, a lot of, a lot of students get out with a lot of college credits and have the available, you know, the opportunity to go to graduate school one year, you're you're 19, you're 20 years old, maybe never had a, an interview the way that it works in a graduate program. We're here to help you. We're here to mentor you, um, you know, through those processes. So that's really what, what we try to do and, and try to be out in the community as much as possible on top of our uh, uh, clinical duties at, at the hospital, of course. Awesome. I love that you're doing that because that's one of the conversations we have here at Region 1 around the office. We keep hearing from industry, from partners, um, that employability skills is so critical for these students as they move forward. And like you mentioned, you know, some of them are, are doing a great job taking the right courses, having, you know, wonderful grades, 4.0s and all this stuff. But without these opportunities and hearing, you know, what is it, you know, what are my next steps and, and how do I, you know, choose that, that dream that future you know that that's out there for me because you're right they get in there and they just clam up or they you know don't make that impression that's needed that's not showcasing their skills they're not gonna very gonna get that opportunity perhaps so i yeah, love that, I, that you're making yourself your team available yeah i have to say sometimes it's all just because they've never experienced it they've never seen it they it's not so much that they can't do it everybody can do it it's just you know, seeing it, you know, realizing what it's all about, uh, giving that person just a little bit of confidence, but understanding, you know, I, I always like to use the word, you want to be confident, but you got to be humble at the same time. And that's really what, you know, employers 
want to hear. So, you know, it's just uh, making them comfortable and, and you know, making them co confident to know that you've got the skills to do this. You can do it. Excellent. Let's talk about a day in the life, um, whether you as a in your role or a, or a pharmacist that, you know, you know, what kind of yeah. different paths can you take within the pharmacy profession? Oh, man. And that's a funny story, because believe it or not, even though my my father was a pharmacist, when I got interviewed for that co-op program, I could only think of like the the ones that we most people know about, like your community, which is your, you know, your H-E-B or your Walgreens, your CVS, Walmart, uh, hospital pharmacists. And then I could only think of like, oh, an academia. But really, there is, you know, it, it goes so, so far past that. Uh, yes, it's retail. You got community, but then you got those who own their own pharmacy that may even take it a step further and and do some kind of healthcare business or healthcare administration. Then you got like myself who work in a hospital, but just in the hospital itself, there's different kinds of pharmacists. You know, we have our clinical staff pharmacists just a, just a floor below me in the second floor. Then we've got our clinical, you know, rounding pharmacists are those people that, you know, you see a movie and there's a bunch of doctors and healthcare professionals, you know, talking around a patient, trying to do what's best. That's, you know, a whole group of pharmacists up here. Then you've got within that group, uh, our pharmacists like myself that have, you know, dabble in a little bit of everything is what I like to say. We've got our academic role. We've got our research role. We've got our clinical role. We even do a, a little bit of, of administration. And then you can, then you have those other academic pharmacists that may be directly, uh, you know, in the school, like at the University of Houston, where they do more, more teaching um, and things of that nature, yet still maybe have a, a small clinical role. And then outside of that, the, you know, there's people who work for, for drug companies, uh, people that are administrations at hospital, you know, in the, in the hospital administration as a whole, um, work for insurances. I've heard that there's pharmacists that can do remote work. Um, you know, it really spans, you know, so far there, there's some that will, that will teach, uh, you can work for the, for the state board of pharmacy. Um, you know, there, there's so many, there's so many different things you could do. Um, I'm sure you could even be, uh, you know, we, we get accredited at our facility by a, by a, uh, somebody called the joint commission. I'm sure you could even work for them. Uh, and the State Board of Pharmacy, just so I could say, they're the ones that ensure that we're following all our laws and regulations. So they do come inspect every pharmacy that that will see patients or, or you know, uh, dis distributes meds to patients. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it's and it's it's and it's it can be really endless <laughs> in healthcare uh, right now. Pharmacists have the opportunity to do a lot. Awesome. You talked. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, and now more for the day of the life. I gave you like all the different things pharmacists can do. My daily life, uh, I'm actually, I'm pretty fortunate. I come in, um, you know, I kind of review, always got to read my 50 emails when I come in in the morning, make sure I catch up on all those things, make sure there's nothing that's needed. Uh, if I have a student, I make sure to touch base with them. If we have them, I actually work um, in the emergency department. Um, I kind of help oversee that a little bit more than I'm actually there. However, I do work there sometimes if our normal staffing uh, ER pharmacists aren't there, I do help out. Or if something major happens and, the, and they need more help, I'll, I'll be there. Uh, so, you know, if I have my student, we'll take them down there. We'll discuss different things during the day. Um, you know, if I need to stay there, then what we do kind of in the ER is we'll verify orders. We talk with physicians. We ensure we're getting everything that the physicians need, everything that the nurses need for our patients. Uh, we respond to, you know, um, to different codes. So think of code blues. Uh, somebody comes in with a stroke or a heart attack. Um, we're there ensuring, you know, the appropriate therapy is being given that they have it available. Also, that's very important in the emergency department. And then, you know, depending if I'm back up here, I'm either doing things associated with my with research, um, helping with uh, my residency program. So I'm, you know, an interim director right now. Uh, so ensuring all of that is going well, uh, you know, especially right now that we're making that transition from they're going to be graduating in June. So they're and we're getting our new cohort. So making sure everything's <laughs> ready for that. Um, and then just the overall uh, overarching, you know, administration part of pharmacy in, in a facility, in a, in a hospital. So all of our committees, uh, policies, um, you know, helping out with issues that are happening maybe in the units or on the different floors and things like that. A lot of 
uh, communication with different departments, different healthcare workers, uh, the department itself. Um, you know, it, it it it's a lot in one day, and that's what I that's what I think I really like is that number one, I'm always learning. There's always something new or something that, you know that I didn't know that that I'm learning. Uh, number two, no day is really exactly the same. There's always something different happening. Um, and number three is we have a great environment for 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 learners. We have a lot of pharmacy students. We even have some people, um, you know, who come in and are shadowing and things of nature. And I love to see that because you get to communicate with them and talk to them and and uh, you know just just um, enjoy our time. I mean, I love I love what I do. So we're I'm very blessed. <laughs> Awesome. Now you talk about job shouting. I love that. That's another great way. Um, mm -hmm. I'm always saying they need to rule something in or rule something out. Um, and so how might they get in touch to find out these opportunities, you know, who to, to shadow or, or how to go about yeah. that process? Yeah. So I think, you know, being a, a, a part of different things like pass or, or different, you know, with your counselors or things of that nature, I'm not sure what the different schools might have kind of starting there and whoever that contact is that might be here at DHR Health. But otherwise, really just reaching out to the, I believe it's the education department probably at, at here at DHR. Well, they will contact us, uh, you know, if 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 there's a student or something like that who wants to shadow or uh, pick up the phone and call. <laughs> We've literally had people call the department to ask, uh, you know, hey, is, do you all shadow? Do you, you know, are you, are we allowed to do that? You know, things of that nature. Um, and that's kind of how it gets started. Um, so I just always recommend students to be involved in school. If you've got, you know, you know, there's an organization or, or maybe a group that's going to a tour DHR health or real ground regional or South Texas health or, or mission, um, you know, take advantage of those. That's where you meet people. And that's where I always let everybody know when they come by and do our tours, just reach out to us, reach out to Selena, reach out to myself, uh, you know, to Gab, who's our VP of pharmacy services or, or Ron, our assistant dean, um, that helps a lot. Uh, you know, we will do our best to get you in here. So. Excellent. Do you have any advice for these students that are here in high school and ways to kind of make decisions, uh, you know, schools, what, what kind of. Yeah. Um, always work hard. Uh, you know, it's nothing will ever be easy. Uh, the harder you work really, you know, you, you reap the reward. Um, I think the other thing is just never close any doors. I would have never thought that I would be in the role, uh, that I am now. I wanted to be, uh, like, you know, the type of pharmacist my, my father is, um, never would have thought that I would be here in, in all honesty. So that's why I always tell everybody never, never close any doors. It's never too late you know, to, to, to necessarily change your mind. If you, if you really want to be successful in what you do, you really got to want to do it. You got to have that passion. Um, so, you know, uh, work hard, you know, really have that passion for what you want to do, uh, be involved, be involved in, um, as many things as you can and ensure you're stu still doing well in school. I think that's very important. Um, you know, always remember to give back, whether it's in your community or you're outside of your community, you know, get involved in volunteer services. I think that's just important for, for, for your, for your, for your health, for your mental health. Um, I think it's always great to help others uh, when all possible. Um, but yeah, really, you know, staying involved, working hard, being passionate about what you want to do, really, really try to go out there and, and find what, what you want to do, you know, what your next steps are and whatever that might be, um, you know, even if it's, you know, something like, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily going to college and you go out and, and get a, you know, um, I'm losing my, my, my thought, but, you know, a certificate or something to work like a technical college may provide a, if you're passionate about it and you want to, you know, do something with that, go out and do it. Uh, you know, I think it's important. We need all, jo all jobs are needed and essential. So, uh, I think that's really important. You, you got to be able to work hard and have that passion. I love that. You're hitting so many things that I want to keep, you know, talking about. It happens to be mental health week. I don't know if you're aware of that, but there's a <laughs> yeah. lot of that going on and wearing green on Wednesday or whatever the case may be. Um, but another thing I'm hearing is the passion that you bring up. And yeah. I really appreciate that because I've heard that multiple times. 
from again industry partners that don't go after a paycheck don't you know choose this role because oh doctors make money or lawyers make money or whatever the case may be even you know football player you know whatever it is you know that that you love you have to be passionate about that's what's going to take you beyond and then you're not truly working you're yeah. enjoying it's just it's what you want to be doing anyway and so then it's easier to put your heart into it that extra work that you're talking about you've got to work hard you know whether it's making the grades whether it's making the connections whether it's you know preparing for the interview you know everything that that you're bringing up you just like ding ding and you check it out <laughs> so many boxes for us to do dr garza i can't thank you enough for, oh, for hitting all these without uh, and just so you know, obviously we're not scripted, folks. Um, this is just conversational. This is what we want to be, you know, so the students, you know, can hear this and, and just kind of make mental notes, hopefully take some written notes and be best prepared, you know, for this is a big decision. Just like today is decision day. You know, this is something that's going to impact possibly the rest of our lives. And, and we don't want you to get a job. We want you to find a career that there's a big um difference between the two mm -hmm. and that goes back to that passion that you mentioned yeah 100 you don't want to hear from me oh, t talk some more uh <laughs> you know any or any other questions from any of our participants here today i feel like i'm kind of dominating here but i just want to kind of keep the conversation going so is there anybody yeah. else so i have a question um yes. when did you know that pharmacy was for you? I mean, I know that you said that your dad was a pharmacist, um, but did you just grow up knowing you were going to do pharmacy? And how did you get through the math portion of the pharmacy? Uh <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, it's funny because actually um, going along the lines with what you all were talking about was I actually wanted to be a doctor thinking like, oh, you know, I want to go make all the money and do all the big things, even though sometimes I'm like, wow, it'd be really neat to do that too. But I mean, I love my passion. But when I found out how long schooling was, <laughs> um, I just like, oh, no, you know, let me check out pharmacy. I, I, you know, just because of the way I grew up, I was, I, I was around pharmacy, I knew it, I never really realized, you know, just how much, you know, when I look back, I think like, wow, I saw a lot as I grew up, didn't really realize it. What my, my ultimate goal was always I wanted to give back to my community and I wanted to help people. I know that sounds so cliche, but I really just wanted to be that person that someone would pick up the call and pick up the phone and call Karina, you know, hey, you know, what, what do I do for this? What do I do for that? What about this doctor? You know, where do I go? How, you know, what, what do I need to do to, you know, fix a burn or a cut or someone's sick? Do I need to take them to the doctor? Um all those things. I wanted to be that person because that's who my dad was. That's, you know, people would call him and ask those questions. And that's really, as I grew up and I, you know, matured a little bit and got into high school, I realized, you know what, I can actually help people. And I don't need to be a doctor to do that. A, a pharmacist can do that. I knew I wanted to do healthcare for sure, but I've always told people if, if something were to happen, man, I would love, I would love to uh, nursing, Anything in healthcare, uh, I think everything that 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 all of us healthcare professionals do is is just so essential. It's so important. Um, just really helping people. And I, uh, in terms of the math portion, I really love math. So it was actually the science. <laughs> the science is what got me. I loved. I I I love. I loved math. So man, I would. I you know that wasn't too hard of a of a subject for me. But the science part and the chemistry part, it was like most people that are in pharmacy like the chemistry part and not necessarily the math, but for me, it was, it was math. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about um, your experiences at the hospital or your experience as a pharmacist. Like, have you had one of those experiences that you say like, wow, you know, like I never going to forget this or um, just a moment where, you know, kind of resonated with you as to why you are a pharmacist and what you're doing? A hundred percent. I think I've, you know, been very, very lucky, very blessed to have a couple of, you know, different runs. Really anytime someone just says thank you or someone smiles at you for, for giving them, you know, uh, medication advice or you're counseling a patient or you're just helping somebody, uh, you know, that's, that's always reassurance that I, that I know I'm in the, in, a, in the right profession and that I love and have a passion for. 
But I think the things that will definitely resonate, it's unfortunate, but, you know, during COVID, uh, really, really, um, really showcase everything that pharmacy could do. I believe we were the, the healthcare professionals that administered the most vaccines throughout that time. That was the way they r rolled out, uh, you know, all the vaccines across the nation because they knew there were more pharmacies for people that could access them. So we were the ones uh, administering them. And then here specifically at DHR Health, uh, it was definitely a team effort. It was not only pharmacy. We were a major player in organizing that and structuring it so that we could vaccinate as many uh, people as we did. I mean, we've done, I think, over two or 300,000, I think was the total, you know, uh, people that we've administered vaccines to. And there were days uh, that we did, you know, 6,000, 8,000 out at the Bird Ogden Arena. Um, you know, I I look back, I don't even know uh, how we did that. <laughs> we were working 60, 80 hour weeks, uh, missing Christmas, missing New Year's. Not really, I shouldn't say missing because the, the people that we work with were very fortunate. We're a family here just like as much as we are at home. So we were still with our family, but not, you know, your, your, your blood family, but, uh, we took, you know, it, it was nice to still be with people that, that, you know, that you love. We, we really do love each other. Um, so that was kind of neat. And then I look back and I, I still can't believe, um, that that happened. It's like a movie, you know, you just can't, you can't believe, you just can't believe that. And then just seeing the roles that our pharmacists had in treating those patients that were very sick. We had two or three pharmacists in the COVID unit in that ICU, you know, we were rounding on those patients just as much as as, far, as as physicians and nurses were. And our role, you know, really took off there. I think we're very fortunate to have a lot of support here at DHR Health. We are, you know, known to be somebody who who the physicians want, the, are, the physicians want us there uh, when we're treating patients. So I, I think that goes a long way here. So that was definitely one. And then I think just most recently, um, unfortunately, my grandma had a stroke about two years ago and she came here and, uh, uh, you know, she was going to get a medication that they administer uh, here here at the hospital. And you have to do it within as the sooner you can do it, the better within 15, 20 minutes. And it's a pharmacist who ensures that that order that that my grandma was OK to get it. She's the one who prepares it. Not necessarily the one who administers it because the nurse has to do that, you know, and the doctor has to order it. But, you know, I, I I saw my friend doing that for my grandma. And, you know, when we're here, we always tell everybody, you know, pretend or not pretend, but you got to picture that all the patients that we see in this facility, it's someone's grandma, it's someone's mom, it's someone's dad, it's someone's brother. And so when you actually have that happen to you, it takes it to a whole nother level. So I think that, you know, now... I mean, my grandma, they told me she she had less than than like a 75 uh, percent chance. You know, she the I'm sorry, she had a 75 percent chance not to be here because she was so, she was so much older. She was in her 80s and it was just not it was pretty dire. And um, besides not walking too much, she's all there and uh, still going like like really like nothing, just a little bit slower. But, you know, it's amazing. And everybody always tells her that. And you know, a pharmacist played a big role in that. And that made me really, really proud, you know, to be here at DHR, that it happened here at DHR Health and that, you know, my profession in the pharmacy, you know, played a big role in that all around the board. She even got a med when when they were doing the the little lysis of her of the clot. So uh, that they were, you know, all played a role in. So those I think are, are the moments that resonate the most. And then having students, uh, you know, that I precepted way back become pharmacists now and they're colleagues. There's nothing better than that either. Um, man, there's just so many things, <laughs> but yeah. And Dr. Garza, what do you think about the future of pharmacy? Do you think that it's, you know, we hear a lot about nursing and the nursing shortage, and we hear about um, the doctor shortage and just healthcare in general um, is, there's a big shortage, you know? Yeah. Um, what about pharmacy? How do you see the future of um, pharmacy? And do you think that there's potential for students who are interested in that field to have a competitive edge in getting um, different internships and just different opportunities um, to be those professionals of the future? 
A hundred percent. Like I said, I think we're going through that cycle where that generate, you know, there's going to be a large gap, uh, you know, when they made that co-op program to, to help with the shortage here in the Valley, there was, there, there's all those years there where the older generation of farm pharmacists that it's kind of happening now are beginning to retire. So there's going to be like a, like a gap that comes about it. I think it's a cycle that probably happens in most careers and, and, you know, COVID of course has added to that, but there will definitely be, uh, you know, the normal careers that I talked about, you know, your retails, uh, those who own their own pharmacies, the hospital pharmacies. But I think that if we can get some people that are are very passionate, and I mean, all of us are trying to push our profession right now uh, to do more where, you know, that right now you're hearing a lot about this model that's called test to treat where, um, you know, that we can do very, very minimal testing, maybe for strep or, you know, uh, things of that nature where they don't even have to go to the doctor. They can go to maybe like a clinic where there's a pharmacist and a nurse and someone's there to treat so that people have more access to healthcare. And I think that that's where it's going is that our, you know, we're going to be able to do even more with our license. Right now, we uh, we have pharmacists who do that. We have pharmacists at our diabetes clinic that have something called a collaborative practice with the physician. So for for, for certain disease states or, or uh, illnesses that these patients have, like high blood pressure uh, with their with their insulin for their diabetes, the pharmacist can actually make changes to their regimen without asking the doctor. They can just do it. So I think that that's where it's going so that we're able to, you know, take care of more people. We all know that that's that that's a problem. There, there just isn't there isn't enough. There isn't enough. There, there's there's our population is too large to really fully care for for our patients. And that's why I'm so passionate, because in our culture and being Hispanic, we are, you know, more prone to diabetes, more prone to, you know, kidney issues, liver issues and things of that nature. And we need people to get out and educate and and take care of these patients. And we need we need more. It's just, you know, it's that balance between, you know, I mean, it's still a job. Someone has to pay for that job. We we don't have all the money in the world to just, you know, hire people to do it. But um, it's moving in that direction. You're starting to see that healthcare isn't just about the number anymore. It's actually just, you know, taking care of that patient, ensuring that that patient is well taken care of from the beginning, uh, you know, uh, before they get sick. So that I do think that it's moving, but we have to continue to push that envelope and not stay stagnant in our pharmacy profession. So I think that's what we're all trying to do right now. So what are some of the recommendations that you would give our students who are looking to uh, pursue a career in pharmacy or healthcare in general? Mm -hmm. I mean, are there some... Um, goals and targets that they need to meet um, prior to them getting into the healthcare field. Um, what are your recommendations on that? Yeah, I think uh, for sure you got to do well in school. That's always the big player. I've, every student should understand that before you can get an interview, they're going to see you on paper. So you want to have good grades. You want to ensure that you're involved in your community somehow, some way, get some volunteer hours, um, you know, go help out at your church or help out at a church or at a local hospital, some kind of, you know, food drive or toy drive or something that you can be involved in. Um, and then go out. And if you know, let's say you're, you want to do pharmacy, go talk to pharmacists, try to get in there and shadow. You can go knock on the door at, 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 you know, science pharmacy or Lee's pharmacy, or probably even HEB somebody, <laughs> I don't know what that process is for, for the corporate world, but, you know, and just talk to them, get an idea of what they do, see how you can get in there, you know, to shadow, Come, contact DHR, contact our pharmacy department, you know, try to, to, to see what, you know, is this really what you want? Is this really what you want to do? So I think that those are really the important steps. And then once you know that's what you want to do, and if it's a graduate program that you're probably going to have to interview with, go practice, prepare for it. Don't just, you know, don't be overconfident and think like, oh, I got this. Go, go practice. <laughs> Everybody can do better. So, you know, it really goes a long way when you interview and someone's able to identify your passions and you know, all that hard work that's, that's showing on that paper, they can see it. 
um, as you're interviewing. That's really important. And, you know, uh, I mean, I've had my experiences where I've had my bad interviews and my better interviews because I just should have prepared for it. I shouldn't have thought that, oh, I got this. You know, I've been doing pharmacy for eight years. I already know I have a lot of different experiences. Like, no, it, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. You, you still got to prepare. It doesn't matter how much experience you have. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, is there anything else as just a, a last words of wisdom um, that you'd like to impart on our students um, before we wrap up today? I know that you've gone through your journey and have given us uh, different um, examples of what it's like to be a pharmacist and what it's like to work with people. I really, I think out of, the examples that you gave, the the example of COVID was one that really resonated with me because I remember really relying on pharmacists during that time uh, for information regarding the vaccines, you know, and how um, in the community, the pharmacists were really elevated mm -hmm. and um, seen as the people with the knowledge and and the information on 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 the vaccine so i really you know kind of understood you when you were talking about that because i saw that firsthand um taking my elderly parents to get their um vaccines and so is there anything else that you would like to share with us that um you think would be helpful for our students. I know that we typically talk about finances and we kind of chuckle about it, but um, really this career is one where financially uh, there is good compensation. Is, mm -hmm. is that right? Yes. Yes. Very, very much so. Yes. I have to say we're very blessed to be compensated uh, very well for the most part, uh, you know, across the board, everybody probably makes over 110,000, you know, right now at the least, uh, as you move up, you can get pretty high, uh, depending on what you're doing. So we're very fortunate, but I will say that, remember that comes with, you know, a lot of responsibility. Like you mentioned, you know, we were the ones giving that information or a, a lot, uh, during COVID. Why? Because we're probably the most accessible. You could just go, you know, it might be hard to get a hold of a doctor, but you go to HB and talk to a pharmacist in five minutes. So, you know, th there's also a responsibility that comes with that because whatever you're telling somebody, they could go do it, um, you know, and then you you could be responsible or liable depending on on when you, how you gave that advice and when. Um, so that, that, that's the, I think that's the reason why that compensation is where it is. It doesn't just come, you know, uh, we had to work hard for it and there's a lot of responsibility behind that. Um, but yes, a hundred percent. And I think the only other thing that I would leave with is, um, I think as a student, you know, sometimes it may be hard for us to ask for help, uh, or, you know, try to, you know, utilize all your resources, but Matt, I know, you know, uh, with friends that I have and, and you know, principals and counselors and teachers, you know, all types of, of you know, um, school faculty, uh, I would just want like the students to know, like, go out there and use your resources. So many people have so much information that sometimes all you got to do is ask. They didn't even know that you maybe would be interested in this or would want to know or what's out there. And I think that's that's always really important. Um the other thing is always remember that you're always interviewing. <laughs> you never know when you're going to come across somebody who, uh, you know, is the boss of some company or, you know, is in charge of hiring at a facility or at a hospital or at a pharmacy. And you make that connection with somebody and they may forever remember you. So always remember that you're always, you could always be interviewing and not even know it. Uh, that's such a, so, that's such a great piece of advice, you know, yeah. because even when you come in and you go into a doctor's office and you check in the person that you check in with, you know, could be the person that's relaying information. And if you aren't, um, like you said, if, if you aren't, at your best behavior, that's going to be noted. And it's, it's really going to affect whether people help you or not. So I think that that's such a great piece of advice. Yes. And especially here in the Valley, because everybody knows everybody. <laughs> 
So it, it, it goes a long way, but I think we can use that to our advantage. You know, if you're out there and you make a good impression, um, you know, it can take you, it can take you a long way. You never know who you're going to run into or who you're going to help, uh, you know, you know, where, where it could take you. Um, otherwise I'm trying to think of, of anything else. Oh, uh, the only other thing is just communication. And that comes more from my, my healthcare role. Communication is so essential in the job that we do in healthcare, work on your communication skills. And that's why I always say, you know, practicing your interview, you know, asking for resources, I would not be where I am today if I didn't have, you know, the the community of people that I have around me as resources, whether it's personally or professionally. Um, I think it's really important to have that. So just being able to communicate is important. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Garza, for being with us today. And um, just note that all of your information and your journey is going to be heard by hundreds of students that are interested in career health, health career pathways, and particularly pharmacy. Um, and I want to give a special thanks to DHR Health for always being there um, and helping us coordinate the cyber mentoring sessions. Um, the Department of Education has been instrumental in coordinating these sessions for the year. So we're very thankful to our partners there at DHR Health. And um, to all the students that are listening in, you know, please take note that um, this speaker today um, was and is from Mission, Texas, and um, is a native and has come back to the community to really give back. And we see her efforts on a daily basis, and we're very thankful for that. So thank you so much, Dr. Garza. Uh, we really, really appreciate you having um, taken some time to be with us here today. Yes, yes, thank you so much. And I just wanna say thank you to all of y'all and all the, the educators and teachers on the call. Thank you for all that y'all do. Um, you know, it's very important, your roles. And, and if you don't already know that, please know that, that you're greatly appreciated. Thank you. So Dr. All right, guys, you. thank you so much. Have a great one, guys. You too. You take a